A P C accounting for your future. Hi, this is Steve from A P C, and I'm the course director here at A P C. And in this video, we're going to talk about uh, how the CMA C01, the fundamentals of monthly accounting, may test you, and how we can help. So the first part of this video is where we're going to talk about the syllabus in the CMA C01. So, as you can see the syllabus, uh, we have got five aspects in there. So, uh, what do I mean by management accounting? Uh, it's quite different from the financial accounting. So, management accounting is for internal use and the financial accounting is for external use. So, management accounting is something to do with the planning, decision making and controlling aspect. So, planning, which means we're going to set up the costs for each of these products. So after we set to the cost for each, each of these products, we can make our decisions, such as the price decisions. So for example, we're going to set up the selling price of $12 based upon the costs, which is $10. Of course, by selling this product for 12 and costing us for 10, so that 12 minus 10, which will then gives us the profit of two. So uh, that's what I mean by planning. And also we're going to uh, set up the budget as well uh, within the planning uh, with regards to the section C of our syllabus. So budget, which means uh, how many units of products we're going to make. For example, so if we are going to make this bottle and how many of these products we're going to make uh, because we estimated the profit of each of these bottles is to be $2. And if we were to make, uh, for example, $100,000, a hundred thousand units, we can make uh, two hundred thousand dollars worth of profits. Uh, so that's what we are planning. So uh, I said to you before, it's all about planning, decision making, as well as the controlling. So within the planning, we have to set up the costs as well as the budget. So how are we going to set up the costs? So the first thing we're going to do is where we are going to identify the costs as well as this behavior, because the costs can be separated or can be defined in different ways. It can be either variable costs or fixed costs. Um, I mean, quite a lot of these ways that we are going to classify the costs. Of course, we're going to detail that in the due course. And also within the section A, 10% of the syllabus, is talked about the introduction to the management accounting. As I already said to you, it's all about the internal use by the business. For example, uh, one of my friends is starting up his business and uh, I mean, his business is not that successful because uh, he reward his internal staff based upon the external retained earnings within the financial reporting. So this means that, for example, his business has made ten dollars worth of profit, and the box number A has owned seventy percent of shares in that company. The staff will own thirty percent of shares of the company. So he's going to reward his staff based upon the 30% times the $10 worth of profit is going to give them how much? $3, yeah, to those staff. But the staff will not satisfy if the box number A has spent quite a lot of its expenditure during this year. For example, the box number A has spent the expenditure in buying a very, very nice table, but that costs me quite a lot of money. But if we were to use that results to reward our staff using a financial reporting to do that, of course, that's not fair for those staff because 30% of shares, we cannot get control. So that, of course, we will never satisfy about this expensive table. So that what the management account is going to do is to try to adjust this particular situation with uh, making some of the adjustments. For example, we're going to reward you with $3, as we just mentioned, but we're going to plus the expenditures that we've spent, but that uh, is not controlled by uh, yourself. Of course, we're going to reward you with that particular amount. So that's what I mean by management accounting. It's very, very important for the business. So not only for that, but also you need to look at the section D. It's where we're going to account for the control systems. Uh, what do I mean by here is that the, uh, we are mainly focusing on the budgeted financial statements. So I don't know about you, but uh, within a company, we've got two sets of account. So one set of account is called the financial accounting, which is for external investors to use. But one of them is called the internal uh, 
uh, financial statements which is, which is used by the business. So the internal financial statements, they don't have to prepare for it uh, uh, under the IFRS, for example, but it's based upon our tradition, it's most our habits to do that. So how are we going to prepare the budgeted financial statements will be included into the section D. Also, within the section E is where we're going to make our decisions. How are we going to make our decisions? For example, we're going to set up the pricing decision, uh, how much we're going to charge our customer, and how we're going to make our decision under the marginal costing system, for example, whether or not we should continue with this project or we should discontinue with this project. Either we should buy this product from the outside or we're going to make it on our own. It's entirely up to the cost as well as the benefit analysis. Of course, those will be the detailed in the syllabus. So that's what the syllabus is all about. And let's move on to the second part of this video. It's where we're going to look at how the SIMA CO1 examiner is going to test you about. So you're given two hours uh, to do this particular exam with 50 questions in there. So the 50 questions will include, for example, multiple choice questions, A, B, C, and D. You're going to choose one of them, or maybe you're going to choose two of them. It's entirely up to the question. Of course, you're given some of the numbers in this question, where you have to input some of the numbers in there. Also, yes or no type of questions as well. So those will be tested here. And all of these questions are compulsory. This means that you have to do all of these questions uh, in order to pass this exam. Um, the assessment for the CMA CO1 is that a minimum of 50 marks would mean that you can pass this exam. So for example, you've got 49 marks, you failed the exam. You got 51, you pass it. You got 70, congratulations, that's really a good job. So that's how the CMA CO1 is assessed. The third part of this video is we're going to look at how APC can help. Of course, we will provide you with all of this HD quality pre-recorded videos going through the whole syllabus in depth together with our expert videos where we're going to go through quite a lot of these exam techniques together with lots of exercises. If you follow our steps, of course, you can pass the CMC01 relatively easily. We will have the printable study notes. Uh, the printable study notes is complying with the latest syllabus with lots of these exercises in there. So you don't have to buy extra study tests as well as the revision kits from the outside market. You can rely on our study materials and you can gain a pass in the exam with our help. Of course, we've got a tutor support as well, which means that if you've got any questions during your study, email our tutor and we will help you out. And finally, we've got the pass guarantee. This means that if you fail the exam, you can enrol in the course again free of charge until you pass it. And we are confident that with our help, you can pass the CMA CO1 relatively easily. So happy studying and looking forward to seeing you in the actual class. APC, accounting for your future.